This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to take a look at a different antenna setup utilizing two antennas on KO4 OSS's work truck. Why would you use two antennas? And what's wrong with his truck and his SWR? That's what's coming up this week on El Cara Ham Radio. So let's take a look at the antennas that uh, Josh likes to use on this setup. Now, these are some common antennas, the SVB-5s, and they're basically half wave uh, for dual band, 2 meters and 70 centimeters, as you can see there on the packaging. The other thing we're going to take a look at is the harness, or one like the one he's got in use on his truck, and this allows you to connect two antennas to the back of your radio, so you can use them in a co-phased arrangement. Why would you use them in a co-phased arrangement? Well, now we need to move on over to a little bit of a definition. So from a website uh, we can look at here from IW5EDI, we're looking at co-phasing or stacking as a way to get high gain from two of the same antenna. And that's what we're looking to do here on KO4 OSS's work truck. So why are we looking at this at all? Well... Josh is pretty hard on his work truck, but occasionally he goes under trees. And you can see here this antenna has basically been broken. He's still got the one on the far end, if you see it over there, but we need to replace this antenna. But we were curious, like, what was the SWR going to be when we had the broken one on there and we still had a good one? So you can see the other SBB5 on this side. And so we're going to hook up an analyzer, MFJ-based analyzer, and let's take a look at what the SWR is going to be. There's part of your harness as it goes into the cab of the truck. It's off right out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. it's not putting out any power. No. To speak of. So we whip out our trusty MFJ here, and we said, oh, I wonder what the SWR is currently. Now, in this case, I believe he just switched it back off of UHF. We're on VHF now. And pretty close to the frequencies we're using in the area, you can see it's coming at 1.5, but the ohms are definitely off. You can see the resistance is 31 and the impedance is zero, I think, in this case. We're going to go up and down the dial a little bit here, but it would somewhat tune, if you will. It's below two. Uh, but remember, this is with the broken antenna on there. There's a good antenna on this harness but it would not be able to radiate correctly given that uh, we still have a stub of an antenna. I think it's only going to get worse from there. I think you're right. I think that's really good. This is 1.5. So again, we're just kind of going further down and then coming back up just to see where that dip was. And it was still close to where we want it to end the two meter band, but uh, definitely, uh, if we were to try to utilize the uh, harness at this point with the bad antenna and a good antenna, we're going to get uh, bad results as far as the radiation pattern. SWR, though, not horrible as we thought it might be. Yeah, so it's it's until 148. Yeah. Ish. Yeah, so it, it probably wouldn't be something. It's doing something. So here we've taken off the bad antenna, and we uh, thought, well, we've got a good antenna still on there, so does the harness in some way affect the SWR? And yes, it does. You can see now that we don't have any load on the other end, our SWR is now above 2. It's not getting below 2. And it wouldn't go below 2. Now, again, 2 is not horrible, but it's not really what we want either. So we're just kind of showing, you know, bad antenna still on there, bad antenna taken off, when you've got these co-phasing harnesses, um, you're not going to necessarily get the results you were considering. So the lowest we could get was about a two in this instance, and the usable portion of two meters uh, that we use for repeaters and such. So we got to work, and uh, Josh had already purchased a couple of SBB-5s from Comet. And he's putting a new one where the bad one used to be. And now we've got both antennas up and running. Now we come back to the MFJ and you can see we're at 1.3, 1.2 in pretty much the area that we use most of the time for repeaters in our area. So it dipped around 146 and a third, uh, 0.3. 
But as we went up to 147, still 1.3. Uh, and that's what we hit with repeaters in our area. And so you can see adding a proper antenna on both sides now, we get what is essentially the SWR of what we can get with one if we were to not use a co-phased harness or a little bit less than what we could get with one with a co-phased uh, harness, but only one antenna. Now, all of this is fine and good from an SWR. Our radio is going to like this. That's great. But how does this operate? So let's switch over to UHF and let's see what it looks like over there. Sorry for the camera wobble there. Now, this won't show uh, the uh, resistance, so we're not going to see our uh, 50 ohms or that sort of thing. But on UHF, as we go up the band, you can see we're down around 2. Still not as good as we'd like it. We'd usually like it to be below 2, but it's below 3. And uh, I don't think Josh does a whole lot of UHF work. He might do a little bit, but you can see in the usable portion of the band, it's just flat as it can be across the band. And uh, we're up around 443 for a couple of the local repeaters, and we were at about 2.0. And then we thought it would be fun. Well, let's just attach the bad antenna to the MFJ since it has the right connectivity. And I think 5 was about as low, or 3 point something, I think was about as low as we could get it. Remember, it's a broken antenna, so it might have a reasonable load. But look at the ohms and the impedance, it's definitely not coming in the way it should. Not really usable. Three nines when I saw it. Right there, the ohms are good. You didn't mind burning up a radio. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's funny. So now it's time to take it on the road, so to speak. And what we wanted to do is to show that with co-phased antennas, you're getting a slightly different radiation pattern than what you would normally get. In fact, if you're pointing straight at, like you point the hood of your truck in Josh's case, at the antenna or at the repeater or at the person you're talking to, it's going to sound really, really good because you're getting the gain of two antennas. But if you were to turn your truck sideways to that repeater, you're going to lose some of that signal gain uh, from both of those antennas. And that's what we're testing here. We're hitting a repeater about 35, 40 miles away. So we hit this particular repeater, more or less looking straight at the repeater, or it was behind us, actually. And we're just moving the truck to where we're going to be sideways with that repeater. And you can see here the S unit meter down just above the frequency is is looking at eh, three to four at times and jumping up. But when we were pointing directly at the repeater, it was almost full scale. Yes, sir. I'm I'm getting about that same reaction on my meter on the comeback. Uh, I appreciate you hanging out with me and doing that with me. And, uh, we're documenting this for a video and uh, it did exactly what we expected. Thank you very much, sir. Now it was at this point we also wanted to check to see what the impact of the LED lights on top of his truck was having on his radio and Josh had said it wipes out his radio as far as getting out. So here we're hitting the 045 repeater again and getting a nice comeback but we don't have any of the lights on. As soon as we turn the lights on there's the power going out, but nothing coming back. It just kills the receive. So a lot of people complain that when they run their LED lights on their off-road truck or at the rally, we even had this where one of the uh, uh, cars that goes down the stage to check it, the triple zero, double zero, or the zero cars, when they run their lights, the radio doesn't work on the receive side, and that's exactly what we saw. And in this particular case, we kept hitting the repeater, so uh, KD4IIG came back and said, hey, somebody tried to test their radio, and we had to apologize for just chunking the radio. But you can see, no receive once those lights are turned on. Where are the rear ones? Right next to it, they're pointing backwards. Oh, so, okay, front yeah, pointing. Yeah, you step out and get a picture of that. Of the lights, Yeah, I'll turn the lights on. 
how my bright LED lights on my rack. So we're just showing turning on the lights here, and if we can hear the radio reasonably well, we'll be able to tell that that receive goes down. Wiped him right out mid, mid conversation. Dang. So Joel was right in mid sentence. We turn on the lights, no receive. Yeah, currently nothing. Right. So we thought, well, let's switch over to another repeater and let's use the lights. <laughs> hit the 88. So we're going to hit our club repeater, the 88. And uh, we had uh, talked, I think we had just spoken to AC4DM. Yeah, like drum somebody up and wipe them out in conversation. Right. KO4, OSS for radio check. I, D, N, 4, L, C, Almost full scale. Repeater. And we're not looking right at the 88 with his hood, but pretty close. Thank you for All right, Ronald, thank you so much for coming back to me. Uh, Brian and I are making a video right now showing how the effects of LED spotlights play havoc on your transmit and receive. So uh, I wish you would just, uh, Do a just talk back to me for a minute, give me a countdown, and I'm going to turn my lights on, and we're going to show how it wipes, wipes you right out. Okay, I've actually experienced that very situation. Gone. Uh, and he's back. And he's gone. He's back. He's gone. <laughs> He's back. Perfect. Perfect, Ronald. Thank you so much, brother. I sure do appreciate it. You, anyways, you're sounding great, man. Radio's working good. So where does this leave us for our video today? Well, co-phased antennas is not a new thing. Truckers have been using co-phased antennas to try to get better signals forwards and backwards when talking to their brothers out on the road. Uh, the actual um, engineering, if you will, you want to have the antennas far enough apart that they're actually going to be useful. We're utilizing two meters here, so you need to be about six feet apart. We're not quite that, but we're far enough apart with two meters that we can make it work really well with this arrangement. As you get up into the bands, 10 meters, 11 meters in particular, CB, you would want those antennas to be even further apart. And the other interesting thing about running co-phased antennas, normally with a single antenna, you're very much aware of needing a ground plane. And on a lot of the newer vehicles, but in this case, even with Josh's truck, he doesn't have a good ground plane. And on his old truck, where he had a wooden bed, he basically had no ground plane other than, in this case, the roof of his truck. When you utilize two antennas in co-phase, they actually create a ground plane amongst amongst the two antennas. And so you actually get good results without having to worry about a ground plane as you would with a single antenna. So we want to keep them far enough apart so that the pattern is useful and we also they also create their own ground plane because if you think about it a lot of the big semis are fiberglass and so there's no metal there for them to actually create a ground plane off the roof of the truck. I hope this uh, video has been interesting to you. Uh, Josh is the only one that I'm aware of in our club that's running a co-phased arrangement. But for some of you, this is old school. This is CB stuff. But there's no reason why you can't use co-phasing. And if you ever look at beams on some people's towers, they're running two beams. That's co-phasing also. But getting them far enough apart can sometimes be an issue uh, just to get the pattern to be useful. Because if they're too close together, uh, the pattern's really not much different than a single antenna. I'm KY4BDP, Brian, for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. We hope you enjoy videos like this. Maybe it gives you food for thought. You know what? A lot of people watch these videos and they're not subscribed. Hit that like button. It won't hurt you. And also hit the subscribe button, and uh, that way you'll see new videos as they come out usually once a week. Take care, everybody, and thank you for watching the video, and we'll see you down the road. 73.